All right, let's jump right in. Unmanned combat is changing warfare as we know it, and Turkey is right at the forefront with their Kizilama drone. It's definitely shaking things up. Yeah, no kidding. We came across this article that talks about Pakistan wanting to get their hands on this Turkish-made drone, and, well, it sparked a ton of discussion. So in this deep dive, we're going to break down what makes the Kizilama so special, why Pakistan is so interested, and how all of this plays into the bigger picture of Pakistan and Turkey working together on defense. It really highlights how technology is changing the whole global power dynamic. Absolutely. What makes this Kizilama so different is that it's not your everyday drone. We're talking jet-powered, crazy speed, and it can move like nothing else. Plus, it's got that advanced AI for autonomous operation. And get this, it's got stealth capabilities. It really is a major step forward in drone technology. Those traditional drones, you know, with the propellers, have their limits. But with a jet engine, this thing can operate at much higher speeds and altitudes. It's just way more versatile. It's wild, right? Instead of just hovering over a target, this drone can actually get in there, like dogfighting, in contested airspaces, places where those other drones wouldn't last a minute. That's a game changer. Yeah, it totally changes things. And that's probably a big reason why Pakistan is so interested. Now, let's talk about Pakistan's perspective for a second. Mm -hmm. Why are they so keen on getting this drone? What's driving their interest? Well, the article points out a few things. It's a huge boost to their surveillance and strike capabilities. Plus, it gives them a technological edge in unmanned combat, which is getting more and more important. And let's not forget, it lets them keep their personnel out of harm's way by doing those risky missions remotely. So it's about staying ahead of the game. They're not just reacting to threats, they're prepping for what's next. Right on. Looking at their overall strategy, getting this drone fits right in with Pakistan's goals of modernizing their forces and being ready for any type of conflict. It's bigger than just getting a new toy. It's about how they approach defense in general. But hold on, this Kizilama deal isn't happening in a vacuum. It's part of a bigger story about Pakistan and Turkey getting closer, especially when it comes to defense. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've seen military cooperation between these two countries steadily increasing. There have been a bunch of defense deals and collaborations over the past few years. And there are some pretty interesting examples of that even before this deal, right? Definitely. Pakistan already got their hands on Turkey's Bayraktar TB2 drones, those things that prove themselves in a few conflicts. They've also shown interest in the Anka, that high-altitude, long-endurance drone. And even more interesting, they're working together on that fifth-generation TFX fighter jet project. Whoa, wait, a fifth-generation fighter jet? That's next-level stuff. What does that even mean? We're talking cutting-edge tech here. Stealth, crazy advanced sensors, and avionics that are totally integrated. This TFX project, led by Turkish Aerospace Industries, is aiming to develop a stealthy fighter that can do it all. Air superiority, reconnaissance, Precision strikes, it's a massive project. So what's the appeal for Pakistan? What do they get out of teaming up with Turkey on this? For Pakistan, it's a chance to get their hands on some seriously advanced aerospace technology and to boost their own aerospace industry. It's not just about buying finished products, they're learning and building up their own expertise. I bet there's a ton of valuable knowledge and expertise being shared between these two countries. Absolutely. These collaborations are all about technology transfer, joint research and development, and personnel training. It's a win-win situation. So this Kazalama deal is big news, but it's also just one part of this growing partnership between Pakistan and Turkey, and the benefits go way beyond just getting military hardware. Exactly. It strengthens their defense industries, boosts their technological capabilities, and creates a stronger strategic alignment. Now, let's shift gears a bit and think about how this technology actually impacts soldiers on the ground. How does something like the Kizilama change things for them? That's a really important question. The Kizilama, with its autonomous capabilities and potential for pinpoint strikes, represents a major shift toward what some are calling remote warfare. So possibly fewer boots on the ground, less risk of casualties, and the ability to carry out missions in super high-risk areas without putting soldiers directly in danger. That's a huge change. Exactly. This doesn't mean traditional ground forces are going away but it does change how wars are fought. I'm starting to see the bigger picture here, but before we jump into that, let's take a closer look at what the Kizilama drone can actually do and what it means for Pakistan's military operations. Let's dig into those details. So when we talk about what the Kizilama can do, it's all about speed, stealth, and being able to move like crazy. And unlike those drones with propellers, this one's got a jet engine. So less like a remote-controlled toy and more like 
what, a mini fighter jet? That's a big difference. You got it. That jet engine gives it a huge advantage when it comes to speed and how far it can go. It can reach targets way faster and operate in tougher environments. Earlier, you mentioned stealth capabilities. How does that even work with a jet engine? Aren't those usually super loud and easy to spot? That's where the design gets really interesting. The Key's Lemma is built with stealth in mind, a small radar cross-section, and the engine inlets are specially designed. All that helps minimize its radar signature. So it's basically harder to pick up on radar, which means it's tougher for the enemy to track and target. That's a big deal in modern warfare, right? Radar can make or break a conflict. It's huge, yeah. And on top of all that, the Kizama is packing some serious artificial intelligence so it can operate autonomously to a certain degree. Hold on, autonomous operation. You mean it can fly and do missions without a human pilot controlling it? Kind of like a self-driving car, but in the air? In a way, yeah. It's not totally autonomous, like making its own strategic calls, but it can handle a lot of things on its own. Navigation, finding targets, even dodging threats. So it can react in real time, probably even faster than a human? That's insane. Exactly. That's what makes it so adaptable and tough, especially in chaotic combat situations where you never know what's going to happen next. Okay, so it's fast, stealthy, agile, and smart. But what about firepower? What can this thing actually do offensively? Well, the Kizalama can carry a whole bunch of air-to-ground weapons, like precision-guided bombs and missiles. And it can even be fitted with air-to-air -air missiles, so it can take on other aircraft. So it's not just about spying and keeping an eye on things. This thing can bring the pain. It's designed to be multi-role, gathering intel, and delivering decisive strikes. And for Pakistan, that means they could potentially carry out operations with more precision and effectiveness, maybe even minimize collateral damage. Exactly. With its precision strike capabilities, they can hit specific targets, reducing the chances of civilian casualties and those unintended consequences. That actually raises a good point. Pakistan has been criticized in the past for collateral damage during counterterrorism operations. If this drone helps them avoid that, how do you think it might affect public opinion, both domestically and internationally? Oh, that's a sharp observation. Fewer civilian casualties could definitely improve how people view Pakistan's military actions, both at home and abroad. Okay, so let's circle back to Pakistan's strategic goals for a minute. How does the Kizilema fit into their overall defense strategy? Acquiring the Kizilema is right in line with their goal of modernizing their armed forces and being able to respond to a wider range of threats. And with those ongoing territorial disputes and the general tension in the region, I'd imagine they're pretty worried about potential conflicts closer to home. Oh, absolutely. Pakistan faces some really complex security challenges, and the Kizilema gives them a strong tool to deter aggression and protect their interests. And it's not just about external threats, right? These drones could be really useful in counterterrorism operations, giving them a way to target militant groups in remote and hard to reach areas. Exactly. Think about mountainous terrain where traditional ground operations are super difficult. That's where the Kizaloma's capabilities would really shine. So it's about expanding their operational reach and effectiveness in a bunch of different scenarios. Sounds like a pretty strategic asset. It is. It's about having the flexibility to respond to threats in a security environment that's changing all the time. OK, we've talked about the drone itself and how it fits into Pakistan's thinking. But what about the bigger picture in the region? How might neighboring countries react to Pakistan having this advanced tech? That's the million dollar question. Some countries are likely to see this as a power shift and might try to get similar tech or beef up their own militaries. So there's a chance this could kick off an arms race. That's a little worrying. It's definitely a possibility. When you introduce these advanced unmanned combat systems like the Kizaloma, it can trigger all sorts of reactions, increase military spending, and more competition in the region. And that brings us back to that big picture idea we talked about earlier. All these advanced drone technologies are raising some serious questions about the future of warfare. You're spot on. The way we fight wars is evolving, and these unmanned platforms are taking center stage. It's a lot to think about. But before we wrap up this deep dive, let's go back to the Pakistan-Turkey partnership for a second. Sounds good. Let's take a closer look at what's going on there. So we've talked about how this Kazilama deal is just one part of a much bigger picture when it comes to Pakistan and Turkey working together on defense. What else stands out to you about this collaboration? Well, it's really interesting how many different ways they're working together. It's not just about buying and selling equipment. You know, there are joint ventures, technology transfer, 
and they're even working together to develop brand new systems like that fifth generation fighter jet we talked about earlier. Right. The TFX project. That's a pretty ambitious project. What are they trying to achieve with that collaboration? And what does it tell us about the level of trust and, you know, how aligned they are strategically? I think the TFX project is a really good example of how both countries are thinking about becoming more independent when it comes to defense technology. They both want to rely less on other countries for their weapons and develop their own capabilities in aerospace technology. So it's not just about getting the coolest, most advanced stuff. It's about being able to build it themselves. That's a big change in how they're thinking. Oh yeah, for sure. And to take on a project like that, something so complex and long-term, you need a lot of trust and shared goals. Yeah. It shows just how deep their strategic partnership is and how it's growing. So what's in it for Pakistan? What do they get out of working with Turkey on something like this? For Pakistan, it's a chance to make a big leap forward in terms of technology. They can really speed up the development of their own aerospace industry. They're getting access to Turkish expertise, technology transfer, and they can do joint research and development. So it's like learning from someone who's already ahead of the game and using that knowledge to boost their own defense industry? Exactly. It's a faster way to develop those advanced capabilities, something that might take them years or even decades to do on their own. Okay, so we've talked about the Kizilama drone and the TFX fighter jet, but those are just two examples, right? What other areas are Pakistan and Turkey working together on when it comes to defense? They're doing a lot together, from making armored vehicles and naval ships to missile systems and even cybersecurity. They're also doing more joint military exercises and training programs. So they're really covering all the bases, from the hardware to the training to actually working together in the field. Yeah, it's a pretty comprehensive partnership. And all this collaboration really points to a long-term strategic partnership that's about more than just dealing with immediate threats. So what does all of this mean for the bigger picture, geopolitically speaking? Yeah. How might this partnership between Pakistan and Turkey change things in the region and on the global stage? Well, this partnership could really change the alliances and the balance of power in the region. It creates this new axis of cooperation between two pretty significant military powers. And that could definitely have an impact on regional stability and how conflicts are resolved. And it's not just a regional thing, right? This could have a ripple effect on the global power dynamics, yeah. with countries like Pakistan and Turkey becoming more assertive on the world stage. You got it. We're seeing a move away from those traditional alliances and a rise of these new partnerships based on shared interests and countries wanting more control over their own foreign policy. It's a really fascinating and complex situation. It seems like the Pakistan-Turkey partnership is one we should definitely keep an eye on in the coming years. Definitely. Yeah. And as these technologies keep advancing, the impact on global security is going to become even more significant. It's something yeah. we all need to keep paying attention to and analyzing. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today, from the specifics of the Kizilama drone to the bigger implications of what's happening between Pakistan and Turkey. Is there one key takeaway you want our listeners to think about? I think the main thing to remember is that we're seeing a fundamental shift in how wars are sought, and it's all driven by these rapid advancements in technology. Those unmanned combat platforms like the Kizilama are becoming more sophisticated and more accessible. And that's changing the balance of power, both regionally and globally. And the Pakistan-Turkey partnership is a perfect example of how those technological changes are also leading to new alliances and strategic partnerships. Exactly. So as you learn more about this, think about this. How is this technological revolution in warfare going to change international relations, global stability, and the very nature of conflict? These are questions we'll all be wrestling with for decades to come. That's a great point to leave us with, plenty to think about. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive today. Join Intel Prime channel membership today and get access to exclusive benefits, including early access to new videos, exclusive discounts on Intel products, behind the scenes content, live chat with me and other members. Other options will be soon available. Thank you for your support and for helping Intel Prime grow.